Hi, this is Team Coach Travels, and today we are in Devon. Devon is at the heart of southwest England and is also where half of my family comes from. Sandwiched between Cornwall, Dorset and Somerset, it contains two national parks. A north coast that faces Wales, my home. And a south coast that faces France, my home. With idyllic countryside, coastal towns, the medieval city of Exeter and major port of Plymouth, this is a county that really does have it all. It's far enough away from London to feel rural and remote, but it's still connected easily to the rest of the country. And so we start our road trip on the north coast, exploring Lynmouth and Linton, which are but metres away from each other, but separated by a cliff. You can scramble up the steep footpaths to get to the top, or you can take the easier route, hopping on a Victorian water-powered funicular, which uses gravity and filled water tanks to pull you to the top. Along the coast is Ilfracombe, a seaside town and beach resort with a scenic harbour dominated by an enormous statue on its quayside. Entitled Verity, the statue was erected in 2012 and was created by world-famous artist Damien Hirst. Over 20 metres high, the bronze structure depicts a pregnant woman holding a sword above her head. Verity is on loan to the town for 20 years and was briefly the tallest statue in the UK, beating the Angel of the North only to be overtaken by the Kelpies two years later. In the olden days, my nan used to talk about coming on day trips to Ilfracombe and now I can see exactly why. What a pretty little seaside town. Clovelly is often voted the most picturesque village in all of Britain. And it's easy to see why. Situated in a steep ravine that declines sharply from the North Devon uplands to the sea, its cobbled main street is lined with quaint cottages that meander their way down to its quaint harbour. Every single structure on that street is listed, with 71 Great One and Great Two buildings making up this unique village. Completely shut to traffic, there is a car park at the top of the hill and you pay an entrance fee as the village is privately owned. It's quite the struggle to get from the bottom to the top of this hill, so clearly the residents are much fitter than us, having to carry all their groceries up and down or drag them on their sledges. Imagine trying to move house. So Cloverley is beautiful and we're like, shall we move? But then how do you move your furniture down here? Well, the solution is simple. That's it, just a little tray. But, I bet there isn't a single piano in the entire village. And with lorries unable to travel into the village, I'll bet taking the bins out isn't this resident's favourite job. This is the price you pay for living somewhere as beautiful as this. Next, we travel to the South Coast to one of the UK's biggest ports, Plymouth. Sitting between the mouths of the River Tamar and the River Plym, some of the biggest moments in British maritime history took place here. Including the departure of the Mayflower to the New World in 1620, the location of which is marked with a plaque. Alongside many others, referring to both the good and bad sides of British seafaring, including explorers, armies, deportations and slave ships. Buckfast Abbey is actually a factory where they make Buckfast, the alcoholic beverages for Scottish chaps worldwide. That's also a lie. Well, it might not be a factory, but it was the monks who created it in the first place. So, we love Totnes for its shopping, but Torquay, the seaside resort, left us somewhat cold. That might have been because it was cloudy. Dartmouth, meanwhile, is an absolutely stunning little town, unsurprisingly sitting in the mouth of the River Dart. What an imaginative name! Groundbreaking.
Devon is home to a lot of beaches. The North Coast is famed for its surfing beaches thanks to being exposed directly to the Atlantic tidal swell. While the Souths are calmer and more family friendly. This was our favourite, Hope Cove, which was only a few miles from the coastal town of Salcombe. Exmoor and Dartmoor are the county's two national parks and though the former has rugged coastline, the latter is probably the prettier of the two, containing quaint little villages nestled amid the rugged moorland. Rolling, green and luscious, this is the kind of English countryside that is idealised worldwide. Populated with little thatched cottages, quaint medieval churches, village greens, cricket and lots and lots of sheep. Oh, and don't forget cows, which produce a famed clotted cream, the most important part of Devon's most famous culinary offering to the world, a cream tea. If I lived in Devon, I would absolutely have one of these every single day. And that's why we don't live in Devon. We finish our Devonian escapade in its capital, the ancient city of Exeter. Confusingly, Exeter is not on Exmoor and nowhere near Exmouth, but all three sit on the River X. Got it? That's not that complicated, to be honest. Anyway, a city has existed in its spot since Roman times and became an important religious centre during the Middle Ages. The city's impressive cathedral was built at the end of the 14th century and contains the longest vaulted ceiling in the world. A very pretty city. Exeter and Devon itself is a stunning county to explore. So in the words of the Pet Shop Boys, why not pop in your car and go west? Then shut up. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share and subscribe. But most importantly, subscribe. And follow us on Instagram at Team Quote Travels where you can see all of my amazing photographs. Yes, yes, Jeremy. We are perfectly aware of the fact that all of the photographs are yours. But make sure that you tune in next time to find out where in the world we end up next. Until next time, folks. See ya. Bye. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye. <laughs>